and we're always happy to have her. Jenny, PayPal is one that's been an incredible performer throughout this pandemic, and it has uh, basically not stopped. It's you know within a dollar or two of all-time highs, and it's been marching higher, just like gold. Yeah, so on the last segment, you made a really great point that consumer spending and GDP are down. However, these payment companies are not. Even Visa, after some weak earnings, is still up on the year. So Visa's up roughly 5% year to date. MasterCard's up 3% year to date. Square is up roughly 63% year to date. And I'm sorry, Square's up 97% year to date. And PayPal's up 63% year to date. So all of these companies are doing really well. And that is because I believe we are closer to a cashless future than we've ever Ever been. So we used to say cash is king, but it seems like in today's world, being cashless has actually become the king. So, I mean, you look at a study from Square that said in the beginning of March to the end of April, the number of cashless businesses in the United States increased by 23%. And actually, the United States is a complete laggard in this space compared to other countries like Great Britain, the number of cashless companies increased by 50%. Canada, the number of cash cashless companies increased by 40%. So, it's actually been a benefit to PayPal that we're, you know, the United States is a little bit behind in this space. So, you know, unlike MasterCard and Visa, PayPal actually has no brick and mortar exposure really anymore at this point. So this means that PayPal could really grow due to the fact that we're kind of being forced to be, you know, using these e-payments. So PayPal added 7.4 million net new accounts in April, which was up 135% year over year. This is roughly the amount that PayPal typically adds in just one quarter. So needless to say, they had their best April ever. And then they actually reported the most transactions they've ever seen in May, May 1st. So they had a pretty good spring to say the least. So this is a pretty strong indicator that, you know, many people are turning to PayPal and just digital payments for the first time ever. And this is, of course, a really great thing, particularly for Square and PayPal. So when you go on social media, that positive sentiment is absolutely reflected, particularly in these names. So our first tweet says, it will be interesting to compare PayPal earnings versus Visa. Travel was the primary bear for Visa, but not sure if that category affects PayPal as much. So of course, we talked in the last segment about how Visa reported third quarter results yesterday post-market. They're down a little bit today, but again, I don't really think you can compare PayPal to a Visa as much as you can compare it to a Square. So that kind of brings me into our next tweet, which says, as Visa and PayPal rip through earnings this week, I will be adding aggressively to Square longer term puts. Earnings will reveal some, but we all know the financial statement lies that can be told. Look out for the lies, look out for loan losses, look out below. So Tom, you mentioned a really key word I thought was interesting on the last segment, and that's stabilization. So as we mentioned, PayPal has nearly doubled from these March lows. Could these earnings numbers give us some stabilization in this name, or do you think this is just the beginning of them ripping higher? Well, I don't know if they're going to rip higher. And uh, thank you for actually watching and saying something positive, Jenny, uh, ahead of this segment. Uh, but if you take a look at, uh, I think, Square versus PayPal, it, it, there's a big dichotomy there in the fact that Square relies on small businesses, right, um, and their cash app. And the small businesses are starting to go out of business, right? Or they're not opening up. So I think that's going to be a detriment to them. And they have earnings to, uh, tonight after the close, I believe. Maybe not. Maybe next week. I think it's next week. But I think if you look at PayPal, the amount of transactions that are taking place online is a, definitely a positive for them. But I think there's two things weighing on uh, on investors' minds going into this earnings report is – PayPal has gone up about, what, 67% year to date, uh, and the valuation is getting really, really stretched in this space. Even though their transaction volumes are going up, um, I think there's a concern by a lot of traders and investors going into this that the valuation is starting to get uh, uh, to that point where it's 44 times uh, next year's earnings. That's a big valuation in this particular space, uh, and it's higher than a lot of the others, but they're starting to see growth uh, equate to, uh, you know, better transactions and increasing numbers. And watch the Venmo uh, monetization numbers in this uh, report because uh, they've yet to take advantage of, uh, I think, a really big opportunity there. Yeah, a lot of great information here. Jenny, we appreciate you joining us. Thanks uh, to Jenny Horn. As we say goodbye to Jenny, we want to welcome in Megan Brantley, the VP of Research at LikeFolio.com. 
Uh, to set this up ahead of earnings here, uh, Megan, there's so much to unpack here from PayPal and all the brands under them. Venmo is an important one. We know Cash App has been important to Square. How are things shaping up from a consumer purchase intent mention standpoint for a company like PayPal? Yeah, so whenever we look for PayPal, we're listening for mentions of consumers who are talking about using PayPal, but we're also listening for them talking about using Venmo and um, even Honey, the kind of um, deal saver, deal finder application of this company in a recent acquisition. And what we see kind of confirms what Jenny was just talking about. There was a huge surge in April um, of consumer mentions of actually using one of those services. We saw that carry through um, even a little bit of a bump in June. And what we noted is that in the quarter that they're about to report, so you can see that 20 quarter two, that purchase intent was pacing up about 53% year over year. And now you can see in the very far right bar, it's settling in. Um, that's about 16% higher year over year. So we definitely saw an increase um, as consumers were increasingly pushed to use these digital payment methods. And now we're seeing things settle in and kind of normalize a bit higher than usual, but or a bit higher year over year, but not quite at the clip that we saw um, in, in April and early May. Yeah, Megan, uh, with that with that uh, data that you just uh, showed us, uh, that little pullback that we uh, that we're seeing, even though the stock price has continued to move higher uh, and getting close to all time highs here, do you think a second wave of the pandemic, where people are are going to increase the the shutdowns and the lockdowns, and people are going to have to continue to start ramping up their online spending, that we could see a turnaround in those that data that you're seeing? Uh, now that we're seeing more cases of the virus uh, spread. Yeah, I think that that's, that's definitely a valid theory. I think that that's something that we're watching. You know, we still are seeing levels elevated year over year. You know, we're still seeing levels that are higher than they were even in January and February. So I think that this shows that there's some stickiness to people using these digital payment methods. And I think that what you saw in that big surge in the quarter that they're about to report could be a lot of, you know, first time users and this big shift as people kind of on board. So now it's a matter of tracking long term to say, OK, are these consumers here to stay? And is this something that's setting up for um, for future growth? Megan, with a company like PayPal that has such a high mar uh, bar to meet expectations for growth, can PayPal afford to lose some momentum in terms of its quarter over quarter growth and actually go backwards? Or is it is it okay to look at that last quarter as an outlier, uh, given the fact that PayPal's ran so much and so much of this is priced for growth. Yeah, you know, I think that this is why, you know, a lot of times when we bring things to you guys and we talk about them, there's this big divergent opportunity. But what we can see in this chart is that the, the market pretty much has has things priced probably about right. You know, this is pretty much in line with what we see when we see this increase in demand and we see this run up in PayPal. So I think that expectations are really high and we don't really have this divergent edge going into earnings. So long term, we're definitely watching for this user retention and we're watching for these continued tailwinds as as people increasingly use these these digital methods. But um, from an earnings perspective, there's not an extreme amount of edge because as you can see, as consumer demand has increased, so has the stock price. So uh, another question, this is kind of just off the thematic things that you're following, Megan. When you've seen this pullback on a quarter over quarter basis, which as you note, is still a pretty sizable growth year over year, and it would be a growth uh, kind of alongside the trend that they had seen without that outlier of a huge surge from the last quarter. Has this pullback, though, quarter over quarter been as a result of maybe more frugal uh, economy as, uh, you know, some of that stimulus is, is set to wear off? We don't know what it's going to look like. Uh, maybe people not getting their jobs back. Or is it more a result of things are opening? So the spending is happening off the net and actually back more in brick and mortar. You know, I think that there's still a huge shift to digital payments. When we look at mentions of people who are actually completing transactions online, that continues to grow at a pretty fast clip. 
Um, and actually, I, I believe we tracked frugality. And the last time I checked um, it was about a month ago. You know, we're not seeing an extreme you know, spike in mentions of people trying to talk about um, being more frugal. So I think that there's still an element, you know, consumers are still completing these transactions. It's just in a bit of a different environment. So that's something that, you know, PayPal is definitely benefiting from. You know, we're watching Square benefit from this as well. Um, one thing that's promising is that as we see this increase in purchase intent for PayPal, we're also seeing an increase in consumer sentiment. So sometimes whenever purchase intent starts increasing at this big clip, we see a little bit of a drop off in sentiment. We've actually seen it improve a couple of points alongside this surge. So I think that that's, that's a positive sign that consumers are happy that, that they're, they feel good about using this payment method using and moving forward. Tom, another thing that comes to mind when it comes to something like PayPal is, you know, they have a opportunity for, for data collection as well as obviously things are tied uh, through their system on, on where, you know, people are going and, and that merchant data is, is, is valuable. And we know that's been a big bullish thesis for something like Square. And in a world where, where data is one of the most valuable commodities, it's hard not to see that as a potential, you know, upside for something like PayPal as well. Yeah, and we'll probably get some more clarity on data collection uh, during this testimony in front of the house from the, the big four tech companies, uh, uh, you know, but I think the deals that they're signing, uh, they just uh, signed a deal with Google Shopping. Um, and if, uh, as I mentioned before, the pickup in the pandemic and the spread where, you know, people aren't going out anymore, when you are purchasing things at home and you're in shutdown, uh, you know, typically their revenues are going to uh, to grow up. But I just wanted to ask Megan real quick, um, as far as data you guys have seen using Venmo, uh, and I mentioned before that monetization of Venmo has been one of the sticking points that a lot of uh, analysts have had an issue with. Are you seeing any pickup in Venmo now that, you know, people can't go out and uh, have dinner and drinks and split the tab and you can Venmo to your friend because – you're not seeing your friend anymore. Are you seeing any uh, data there as far as usage on Venmo? Yeah, you know, we, we break these down by brands, and I believe Venmo is actually the fastest go growing clip inside of PayPal as a whole company. Um, the year-over-year -year growth for that right now is pacing about 37% year-over-year for an increase. So I think that there's definitely an uptick in these peer-to-peer -peer payments, and people that are using Venmo are pretty happy. This is something, too, you know, we're not just seeing an uptick in Venmo. We're also seeing an uptick in Cash App as well, Square's version of the same kind of peer-to-peer -peer, um, payment idea. Idea. So I think that, you know, people are increasingly looking for, you know, contactless and digital payment methods. And we're definitely seeing that that growth in Venmo.